my father is staying in his beach house and he's being inundated with water. The houses are full, it's, it's falling apart. The decks fell apart next to us. I just don't want the whole house to fall back. Now at 530, 911 calls from Superstorm Sandy that were never made public until now. Good evening. I'm Christine Johnson. And welcome back. I'm Maurice Dubois. This is one of the many stories featured in our new documentary on Sandy that debuts about 90 minutes from now. And now to more on those calls as the Jersey Shore was devastated. The most horrible thing was the line where you could visibly see that water line and how high it was. And it was, it was almost offensive. Like somebody was yelling at me. So... We called it the FU line. <laughs> it was quite clear that this was going to be this region's most costly disaster in terms of lives and property uh, in anyone's memory. Is the tree going to actually like fall through and the roof it looks like? And there's wires hanging down? I need to report that my father is staying in his beach house and he's being inundated with water. The houses are full, it's, it's falling apart. The decks fell apart next to us. I just don't want the whole house to fall down. Get up on the highest point of your house and stay there until we can get there. The desperation uh, of people who had to go to their attics. To see those people and to listen to each one of them is very sad. At this time, we can't get to you. It's physically impossible. We are trying to get something there, but it's not going to be for a while. People realize that in Ocean County, I believe we had the two deaths in our county as a result of the storm. But then shortly thereafter, I think attributed about 11 uh, deaths that were uh, as a result of the storm afterwards. Uh, unfortunately, suicide is something that takes place when people lose everything. And, uh, you know, we had one within a week in Tom's River. And then uh, we had one about a month later. And, and that certainly takes a toll. And it's something that we have to pay attention to. And just 90 minutes from now, it's 7 p.m. Be sure to watch the CBS News New York original documentary, Sandy, featuring those moving stories of survival and recovery in the 10 years since the storm. You can see it right here on CBS2 and streaming on CBS News New York. And if you scan the QR code right there on the screen, you can also watch reflections from our reporters along with our coverage from a decade ago. We're going to bring in Lonnie Quinn now. You know, we all shared our experiences yeah. in this documentary that you'll see later, but I'm just curious for you right now, what was the most difficult part of forecasting the storm for you? With, with that particular storm, which was a, a beast, uh, the most difficult thing was watching the numbers come in, you know, from all the different data points, and that's what we put together our forecast with, and I'm computing these numbers and I'm coming up with this this crazy amount of storm surge. Look, we've had storms with bigger winds. We've had storms with more fresh water rainfall, right? We've never had a storm with this kind of storm surge. And we were coming up with numbers like eight to 14 feet of storm surge. And sure enough, Battery Park, look at that picture right there. Battery Park ended up with 9.6 just below the wall, all right? So that we weren't catching any of this. However, when the tide came in, it brought in another four feet. We ended up with 14 feet of storm surge. You went over that wall. Look at that. Looks like the Colorado River at the Battery Park Tunnel. And, and I knew if that was going to happen, we were going to be just devastated out there. It looked like the, the roads in Manhattan looked like, in South Manhattan, like south of 14th Street, looked like Venice. And then I thought, oh my goodness, it's going to get into the subway. Salt water on the subway is going to wipe them out altogether. And, and then, of course, what happened in Breezy Point when it ignited those mm. fires and it just, right. it just erased a community. Yeah. What I remember is the rain itself wasn't as big a deal as we expected, but then the gravity in the tone of our coverage changed when we realized, oh my goodness, this surge is really serious. Yeah, the, when we were seeing the data come in and we okay. saw it coming at us for hours after hours, like it was going out to sea, then it made that hard left turn, it's coming at us, and I'm thinking to myself, all right, if everything I've been taught holds true, this is a disaster. And I had a professor tell me, you never want to forecast history. And everything I was saying, 
was going to be historic. Mm. And because all that time, all those hours, it just kept pushing water. Your, your, your storm surge kept, kept getting higher, higher, and higher. And everybody thought after it made landfall, it's like, oh, we just missed it. It, it didn't crest. It didn't come in uh, over the wall here in Battery Park City. Well, the high tide pushed it up and over. Mm -hmm. and, and You said it was going to be the surge. It was the worst. It, it was, yeah, it was going to be a storm about the water, not the wind. Right. We mentioned it. The special's at 7 o'clock. Don't miss it tonight. Yeah. Thanks, Lonnie. You bet.